Hey, it's Abdullah, and this is the Nokia G11 in charcoal and the G21 in Nordic Blue. This year, both devices are a lot more similar than the previous generation. So let's start with the design. While I'm not personally fond of the unsymmetrical look, the phones do get a couple of things right and look more interesting in person than in renders. They are thinner than last year at 8.5 mm of thickness and slightly lighter at 190 grams making them easier to hold and use. They still feel nice in the hand thanks to a very solid polycarbonate frame and dense structure. Practically impossible to blend or even slightly flex by hand, which proves that point. The flat edges also makes the phones feel more secure in hand when holding them in landscape orientation. The matte textured polycarbonate back makes a welcome return. It gives both the G11 and G21 more grip and do an excellent job in repelling fingerprints. And finally, the color choices they come in are quite elegant. Both the Nordic Blue and Charcoal, which definitely has a brown hue to it, make the devices appear more expensive than they actually are. A remark I received from multiple people that saw them on me in person. The camera bump also has some nice 3D visual elements. Unfortunately, it's also prone to scratches and very hard to keep clean because of that. The AI camera text that is only present on the G21 unfortunately looks tacky and just unnecessary. There's also still a sizable bottom front bezel and a V-notch which doesn't exactly scream cutting edge. Overall though, the phones still give off that reassuring, durable feel that a Nokia should definitely have. What do you guys think of the new design language and colors? Now in terms of hardware features, on the front you get a 6.5 inch IPS LCD display with an HD plus resolution, and finally a 90Hz adaptive refresh rate. It is very similar to last year's model in terms of colors and contrast, and despite the similarly advertised 400 nits of max brightness, in my studio the display does look brighter when manually adjusted. On the right you have the volume rocker keys and the power button which also doubles as a fingerprint scanner. It's surprisingly quick and does work quite reliably, although you still can disable it when the screen is locked. All buttons are nice and clicky. On the left there is the dual SIM tray and SD card slot, so you don't have to compromise on extra storage if you want to have two SIM cards, which is nice. The Google Assistant button also sadly makes a return here, but can luckily be disabled, but still not reprogrammable without a third-party software. The top houses the useful 3.5mm headphone jack and the mic hole. On the bottom there's a USB-C charging port, which supports up to 18 watts of charging speed, and another mic hole. There's also a very similar single bottom firing speaker from last year, it does a decent job with sound clarity even at max volume, but it isn't very loud. For the occasional indoor YouTube video, it is okay. In terms of memory, the G11 starts at 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and goes up to a 464 configuration, while the G21 starts at 464 and goes up to a 6 128 gigs setup. Now both the G11 and G21 come powered by the octa-core Unisoc T606 CPU clocked at 1.6 GHz and the Mali G57 GPU. While on paper this might not mean much, in practical terms this is in my opinion the most significant improvement over last year's models, especially for the base G11. The performance on both devices is a huge step up, making them significantly easier to live with on a daily basis. Apps open fairly quickly, scrolling is relatively smooth, also aided by the 90Hz screen, and the overall experience of using them is much more pleasant. With the G21 being slightly better because the version I have has one extra gig of RAM. What also helps is that both come with the lightweight and mostly bloat-free stock Android 11 software out of the box. There are five third-party apps that come pre-installed and all of them can be uninstalled if not needed. Other than that, the software completely relies on Google services for most things. The most notable HMD additions are new settings to change between adaptive refresh rate and 90Hz for the display and a battery super saver mode. It's a bit unfortunate though that both devices don't ship with Android 12 out of the box, but it is coming soon according to HMD. You are promised two years of OS updates, so up to Android 13, and three years of security updates, which is a good advantage these budget-friendly devices offer over most of their competitors. Gaming performance is also slightly improved, but these are definitely not gaming devices. You can enjoy a casual Call of Duty mobile game on low to medium graphics now and then, and I also tested Dead Cells and Asphalt 9, and they both ran okay. Hardcore gamers should definitely look elsewhere though. As for the cameras, this is where the G21 and G11 differ somewhat. They both have an 8 megapixel selfie shooter and visually three cameras on the back. 
But the main sensor on the G21 is a 50 megapixel shooter versus 13 on the G11. And from my brief testing, it definitely captures slightly better and more vibrant images. The other cameras are the 2 megapixel depth sensor, which supposedly helps with capturing portrait images, and the 2 megapixel macro camera. The less spoken about this one, the better, as it's just not very useful. The camera interface is pretty straightforward, so you get a portrait mode, night mode, time lapse, slow motion, panorama, and micro modes. The highest resolution for video is 1080p at 30 frames per second, and both phones come with also audio, which uses two microphones to capture sound with spatial precision. A major selling point for the G11 and G21 is the battery life. They both come with a big 5050mAh capacity and promise up to 3 days of usage on a single charge. Now this is definitely optimistic, but further testing is required. Perhaps the new super battery saver mode will help a bit, but I do expect 2 days of usage comfortably out of these phones. The battery charges at up to 18 watts, but the phone ships with a 10 watts charger out of the box, so keep that in mind. Before concluding, let's talk about connectivity. Both devices this year support Wi-Fi AC standards, so you can utilize the faster 5 GHz Wi-Fi. The G21 also comes with NFC in some markets for mobile payments. But both devices still lack a magnetometer, so Compass apps won't work. You can still use apps like Google Maps, but walking navigation won't be as accurate. While I can't say I'm a big fan of the new design direction, both the G11 and G21 this year are a lot easier to recommend compared to last year's models. The key difference is in the big bump in performance, where last year's models sacrificed a bit too much for the battery life in my opinion. This year's phones find a much better balance. The rest of the spec bump isn't that significant, but I look forward to using each as a daily driver to give you the full picture. The G11 seems to tick all the right boxes for an excellent, work-focused, no-nonsense smartphone, while the G21 is for those wanting a bit more in terms of imaging, storage, and multitasking, at least on paper. Before I let you go, I really don't like talking about politics on this channel, but unfortunately, a small man with an inferiority complex decided to wage war on innocent Ukrainians, and so I'm going to be donating a chunk of the ad revenue generated by this video to help the Ukrainian civilians. If you want to donate something, I'm going to be leaving a link in the description down below. That's it from me, and I hope the next time I see you, we will be meeting under better circumstances.